This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. 19-year-old charged over machete attack at a bar. Detectives attached to the Spanish Town Criminal Investigation Branch have charged a man over a machete attack on another at a bar in St. Catherine. Charged with wounding with intent is 19-year-old Bremar Clemetson of Discovery Bay, St. Anne. The police report that about 8.30 p.m. on June 18, Clemetson went to the bar, pounced upon the complainant, and chopped him with a machete on his head. The injured man was later taken to the hospital, where he was admitted for treatment. Clemetson was later arrested. He was subsequently charged on Tuesday, July 5. His court date is being finalized. 3,000 PPV operators apply for government gas relief grant. Some 3,000 licensed public passenger vehicle operators have applied for the government gas relief program. The grant, valued at $25,000, is aimed at cushioning the rising cost of fuel for operators. The program will cost just under $600 million. Application for the program opened on June 20. Payments will commence in two weeks for applicants verified as having duly paid up PPV license. I encourage those PPV operators who have not signed up yet to do so. Applications will be accepted until the end of August, said Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark in Parliament on Tuesday. Meanwhile, Clark informed that the $200 million loan scheme for taxi operators is now in effect and available through microfinance institutions. Loan proceeds can be used for the acquisition of spare parts, batteries, tires, and repairs. Man accused of pistol whipping relative eludes the cops but leaves a gun behind. Montego Bay man accused of pistol whipping a family member managed to elude a team of cops who attempted to apprehend him early Thursday morning, leaving behind a bag containing an illegal firearm and ammunition. Reports are that about 11.40 Wednesday night, the Ramble police received a complaint from a male resident accusing a family member of attacking him and beating him with a firearm. The complainant was assisted to the hospital. Shortly after 12 a.m., members of the Montego Bay Quick Response team reportedly spotted the accused with a black strap bag slung over his shoulders in the company of several other men in a section of Ramble. On the approach of the police, the man reportedly dropped the bag and ran, managing to escape the lawmen who gave chase. The bag was retrieved and was found to contain a black-handled silver 9mm pistol with a serial number and a model not visible, loaded with three live 9mm rounds. Kingston woman charged for staging her own kidnapping A 27-year-old woman from Kingston who allegedly staged her kidnapping in an attempt to get money from her family, has been charged with extortion and creating public mischief. She has been identified as Shamika Miller, a customer service representative of Phase 1 Seaview Gardens. It's alleged that on Monday, Ms. Miller conspired with other persons and claimed that she had been kidnapped. Her family was sent a video which showed a gun being pointed to her head. When the demand for money to secure her release was not met, Ms. Miller reported that she was freed on Spanish Town Road in Kingston. A probe was carried out and it was discovered that Ms. Miller fabricated a report of her kidnapping. She was arrested and later charged by detectives assigned to the Counterterrorism and Organized Crime Investigations branch. Many Jamaicans seeking U.S. visas not complying with a COVID-19 vaccination requirement. Stephen Black, a consul general at the U.S. Embassy in Kingston, is reporting that hundreds of Jamaicans applying for immigrant visas have not been complying with the requirement to be fully vaccinated against the COVID-19. This is preventing the embassy from fully processing the applications. Vaccine hesitancy has been a sore point locally, with the issue receiving much public attention since the COVID-19 pandemic. During the pandemic, the U.S. changed its immigration requirements to state that immigrant visa applicants must be vaccinated against the COVID-19 as part of the medical exam they receive prior to visa issuance. When they go through the panel physician exam process, this is one of the things they have to demonstrate, and if they are not fully vaccinated, 
then they will not get the panel physician clearance that they need in order for us to process their cases, Mr. Black explained. He acknowledged that many people have been waiting a long time for their visa applications to be processed. However, he suggested that while they wait, it is in their best interest to get the COVID-19 vaccine. Mr. Black noted that the embassy currently has hundreds of cases before it, where the only thing that is preventing us from issuing an immigrant visa to the person is because they are not fully vaccinated. This has become a new requirement for anybody seeking an immigrant visa to the United States. We know there are people out there that have been waiting a long time for visa appointments, and we ask that while they're waiting, and we apologize for the delays, but while they're waiting, it's in their best interest to get vaccinated because when they go through the panel physician uh, exam process, this is one of the things they have to demonstrate. And if they are not fully vaccinated, then they will not get the panel physician clearance that they need in order for us to process their cases. We've got any number of cases in our offices, literally in the hundreds, where the only thing that is preventing us from issuing an immigrant visa to the person is because they are not yet fully vaccinated. Health Ministry urges caution from partygoers amid a monkeypox threat. The Ministry of Health is urging caution for attendees of social events following the detection of monkeypox in Jamaica. It is appealing to persons to continue social distancing. News came on Wednesday that a man in Clarendon, who recently returned from the United Kingdom, was detected with the virus. The individual is in isolation and his closer contacts in quarantine. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Besesa mckenzie said people and especially party goers should not let their guard down. She suggested that persons continue to avoid a closer contact as well as practice other measures such as wearing masks and frequent hand washing or sanitizing. She also reiterated a common call during the COVID-19 pandemic for people to stay home if you are sick. The World Health Organization has said more than 6,000 cases of monkeypox have been reported in 58 countries. In Canada, Ontario is reporting 101 confirmed monkeypox cases across the province, up from 33 cases two weeks ago. A summary report on the disease up to July 4 says there are also eight probable cases in the province. The report says 85 cases are in Toronto, with more than one case each in health units covering Ottawa, Halton Region and Middlesex, London. All reported cases are in men between the ages of 20 and 65, and the commonly reported symptoms include rash, oral and genital lesions, swollen lymph nodes, headache, fever, chills and fatigue. So for everybody who is planning to go out there and party, um, I should hope that they would bear this in mind that close contact is still something that is to be avoided and to use your precautions, the wearing of your mask, um, the hand sanitizing, hand washing frequently to prevent um, contact. But I would also say to persons, another message that should have been clear across the COVID-19 pandemic is to stay home if you are sick. Woman murdered at a Manning's Hill Road bar. A woman was gunned down at her bar along Manning's Hill Road in St. Andrew last night. She is 58-year-old Iceland Rosie Tamasa. It is reported that about 9.45 p.m., residents heard explosions and summoned the police. Tamasa was found dead in a chair at the entrance of the bar. The murder is being probed by the St. Andrew North Police. Moran Bay Examination Depot back in operation. The Island Traffic Authority is reporting that full operations have resumed at the Moran Bay Examination Depot in St. Thomas. The depot was closed on June 2 as a result of the loss of electricity to the entire compound due to road construction in the area. The loss of power also resulted in damage to equipment at the depot, which the authority says has since been replaced. The authority is expressing gratitude to customers for their patience and understanding during the period of closure. Education Ministry acting on recommendations of JETC report, says Williams. Minister of Education Favel Williams says her ministry is acting on the recommendations in the Jamaica Education Transformation Commission report 
which was published in January. Mrs. Williams made the disclosure on Wednesday during a media briefing held by the Education Transformation Oversight Committee. She said focus is being placed on students who are underperforming. In addition, the ministry has revisited the school improvement framework, revised the school supervision and monitoring checklist, revised the school supervisory framework, and the next step is to take a strategic review of central ministry and the regional offices. Mrs. Williams was adamant that under every thematic area, some work has already been done. In seeking to identify gaps and immediate actions, we have already revisited the school improvement framework. We have revised our school supervision and monitoring checklists. We've revised the school supervisory framework. And next step is to take a strategic review of central ministry and regional offices. Under every thematic area, some work has already been done. The Jamaica Teaching Council Bill, which is being debated in Parliament currently, is a major recommendation of the Commission's report and is a visible example of work underway. Dr. Adrian Stokes, chairman of the recently formed Oversight Committee, said while an implementation plan has not yet been finalized, chief in the timeline of action items is the employment of a technical officer. Also high on the list is early childhood development, which according to the report is largely privatized and woefully underfunded. We will be reaching out to different stakeholders before we finalize the plan. We will be reaching out to obtain feedback. Once the implementation plan is finalized, a comprehensive multi-year budget will be sent to cabinet for approval. This to ensure Jamaica's educational transformation thrust is properly funded. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.